cloud car. Cloud cars are any atmospheric flying vehicles that employ both repulsor lifts and ion engines. Typical models consist of twin pods for pilots and passengers. The ion power plant is mounted to the connecting boom. Cloud cars fill a variety of roles. On Cloud City, for example, cloud cars serve as patrol craft and traffic control vehicles. The major manufacturer of cloud cars is Bespin Motors. They make a full line of pleasure craft, personal planetary transports, air taxis, and patrol vehicles. Until recently, the only types of cloud cars they did not turn out were models capable of entering into major combat situations. Cloud City The mining outpost and trading station called Cloud City floats high within the atmosphere of the gas giant planet Bespin. It is a small city of landing platforms, delicate spires, jutting towers, and airy plazas, all held aloft atop a long repulsor lift unipod. Cloud City's major industry is the mining and exporting of Tabana gas, but it also serves as a merchant outpost and recreational center. While off the main space lanes, those who know about Cloud City arrive to enjoy its many casinos, restaurants, and shopping plazas. In addition to the many spacers who frequent its ports, Cloud City boasts a diverse citizenry of humans, droids, and assorted alien species. Cloud City was founded by Lord Ecclesis Fig of Corellia. He started it as a floating work base and slowly developed it into the city it became. Coruscant Coruscant is considered the jewel of the core worlds. It has been the seat of galactic government from the start, and though the methods of governing has changed more than once, Coruscant has remained constant. The Old Republic built the Senate Hall on this beautiful world. When the Emperor took power, he added to the presidential palace to create Imperial Palace, a structure that looms over Senate Hall to this day. When the New Republic was formed, its members decided to use Coruscant the same way the previous governments had. Imperial City, with its majestic spires and dazzling lights, rests at the base of the snow-covered Minari Mountains. Once it was called Galactic City, but since the Emperor changed the name, it has remained Imperial City. It is said that Coruscant sets the tone of the entire galaxy. Styles and fads start on this capital world and slowly spread. The level of culture is unsurpassed anywhere else in the core or beyond. And all of the standard measurements used throughout the galaxy are based upon the norms of this planet. Except for a few isolated melees, Coruscant and its area of the core remained unscathed by the Galactic Civil War. Throughout the collapse of the Old Republic, the time of the Empire, and the rise of the New Republic, the people of Coruscant knew war and hardship only by the news they received. Most saw the shift of governments as the changing of the seasons. Who cares who sits on the seats of power? Coruscant is eternal. Those who were particularly loyal to the Empire fled or were expelled once the New Republic took charge. Between the end of Grand Admiral Thrawn's threat and the return of the reborn Emperor, the Empire made a successful attack on Coruscant. The New Republic leadership was forced to flee from the capital planet, which was left in ruins by the Imperial onslaught. Now neither side uses it as a ruling platform. Instead, the planet and the system have become a battleground for the continuing struggle between Republic and Empire. Dagobah The swamp planet Dagobah resides in an explored but sparsely populated star system of the same name. The planet, shrouded in mist and covered by clinging vegetation, was the home and hiding place of Yoda, the Jedi Master. As the principal planet in a star system of the same name, Dagobah is not much to speak of. It has no spaceports, 
and none of the conveniences of modern technology. Its neighbors throughout the Sluis sector consider it to be a haunted place due to its connection to the Dark Jedi of Fash. The evil rampage of the Dark Jedi came to an end on the Swamp Planet after the group terrorized the systems of the Sluis sector during the Clone Wars. Dengar. Dengar was one of the bounty hunters hired by the Empire to find and capture the Millennium Falcon and her crew immediately following the Battle of Hoth. Dengar, a human, wears assorted pieces of battle armor and carries a variety of weapons. The bounty hunter who confronted Mara Jade on the planet Rishi carried text docs that identified him as Dengar. It is doubtful that the two are in any way related. Jade killed this Dengar to save herself and keep Card's organization from being found. Detention Block AA-23 Detention Block AA-23 was the location deep within the Death Star battle station where Princess Leia Organa was held captive by the Imperials. Specifically, she was imprisoned in cell 2187. Devastator The Imperial Star Destroyer Devastator captured Princess Leia's counselorship over the planet Tatooine. She was trying to smuggle the technical readouts of the original Death Star to Alliance High Command when the Star Destroyer intercepted her vessel. Droid the automatons of the galaxy, droids are typically fashioned in the likeness of their creators or in a utilitarian design that stresses function over appearance. Droids are equipped with artificial intelligence, though some are naturally created smarter than others, depending on the function they are designed to serve. Many droids are programmed to understand basic or the native language of their masters. Only those whose function is to regularly interact with organic beings are provided with a speech synthesizer. All other communicate via a program language that is un unintelligible to most organic beings. Some people who spend a lot of time working with or around droids do pick up the language, at least well enough to understand it. Powers provided by rechargeable cells stored within a droid's body Many organic cultures, including the Empire, treat droids as property and slaves, and many public areas are considered off-limits to droids. There are five droid classifications, each assigned according to a particular droid's primary function. First-degree droids are skilled in physical, mathematical, and medical sciences. Second-degree droids are programmed in engineering and technical sciences. The social sciences and service areas, such as translation, spaceport control, diplomatic assistance, and tutoring, are the domain of third-degree droids. Fourth-degree droids are skilled in security and military applications. Menial labor and non-intelligence intensive jobs such as mining, salvage, transportation, and sanitation, are handled by fifth-degree droids. Most droids, regardless of their classification, have the capabilities of locomotion, logic, self-aware intelligence, communication, manipulation, and sensory reception. The Empire Emperor Palpatine named his regime the Galactic Empire after he came to power. The regime was supposed to eradicate the corruption and social injustices of the previous government, but it soon became evident that the Emperor had no intention of returning the galaxy to a state of peace and justice. His government corrected the mistakes that made the old Republic ineffective and unwieldy, but it also installed a program designed to subjugate as many planetary governments as possible for the personal glory and benefit of the Emperor. The Empire was a regime of tyranny and evil, bolstered by a vast war machine and held together by the dark will of the Emperor. 
The Empire held sway over the galaxy for many years. Its iron hold was shattered by the Rebel Alliance at the Battle of Endor. Since the Battle of Endor, the Empire has been reduced to a quarter of its size at the height of the Emperor's power. While it continues to rule a small portion of the galaxy and wages battles against the New Republic government, it is nothing more than a remnant a pale shadow of its once darkly powerful self. In many ways, the empire that exists five or more years after the Battle of Endor is much like the Rebel Alliance it once fought. Disorganized, lacking in overbearing firepower, and engaged in a hit-and-run style of warfare, it showed some signs of its old glory under Grand Admiral Thrawn and the reborn Emperor but the New Republic was able to win out against both of these threats. Endor, Sanctuary Moon The Endor star system was selected as the construction site of the second Death Star battle station. The insignificant, out-of-the-way system had few planets and no major spaceports or travel routes, making it an ideal location for the secret Imperial project. It became famous later as the system in which the Alliance finally won the Galactic Civil War by destroying the second Death Star, killing the Emperor, and scattering the remnants of the Imperial fleet. The system was named for its primary planet. Andor's moon is home to vast forests of giant trees, many predator species, and the tribal tree-dwelling Ewoks. Three other planets orbit the system's ancient sun, but they are too far from its warm rays to support life. All three are rich in minerals and ore, and imperial mining operations here once provided the materials necessary to build the second Death Star. By the time of the New Republic, only one mining operation remained active. It resides on the planet's nearest Endor's moon, a large dark orb designated Alogi. A Soliston company runs the operation under a charter granted by the New Republic. According to the Ewok animated television series, Endor is a small moon that orbits around the planet Tana. A second, smaller moon also spins around Tana. Tana itself orbits a binary sun. Ewok the curious, furred bipeds native to Endor's forest moon are called Ewoks. Standing about one meter tall, the tribal Ewoks have yet to advance beyond spears and bows, but their understanding of forest lore and survival skills cannot be matched by more advanced species. These hunter-gatherers live in village clusters built high within the moon's giant trees. Easily startled, the Ewoks are nonetheless brave, alert, and loyal, and they can be fierce warriors when necessary. Dismissed as inconsequential by the Empire during the construction of the Second Death Star, the Ewoks were one of the deciding factors in the Battle of Endor. One tribe befriended Leia Organa and her companions in the Rebel Strike Force. With the help of tribe provided, the strike force was able to complete its mission to disable the shield generator protecting the Death Star. This allowed the Alliance fleet to engage the battle station directly and win the space battle that raged around the forest moon. The Ewok language is liquid and expressive, and most humans and other aliens can learn to speak it. Ewoks conversely can learn basic though they often mix in many words from their own language. During the day, Ewoks come down out of their tree villages to hunt and forage on the forest floor. At night, the forest belongs to huge carnivores, and even the youngest Ewoks know not to venture out after dark. The Ewok religion is centered around the giant trees of the forest moon. Legends refer to the trees as guardian spirits and even the parents of the people, which is why the Ewoks believe that the great trees are mighty, intelligent, long-lived beings. 
the Ewoks' mystical beliefs contain many references to the Force. Though it is never named as such, they are a musical species, are overly curious, and are loyal to their tribes and friends. The Force. The Force is an energy field generated by all living things. It surrounds and penetrates everything, binding the galaxy together. Like any energy field, the Force can be manipulated. Knowledge of these manipulation techniques gives the Jedi Knights their powers. There are two sides to the Force. The peace, knowledge, and serenity of the light side, and the anger, fear, and aggression of the dark side. Both sides of the Force are part of the natural order, life-affirming and destructive. Through the Force, a Jedi Knight can see far-off places, perform amazing feats, and accomplish what would otherwise be impossible. There are three known Force skills, Control, Sense, and Alter. Only Force-sensitive beings can master Jedi skills and the techniques they control. The control skill is the ability of a Jedi to control his or her own inner force. With this skill, the Jedi learns to master the functions of his or her own body. The sense skill helps a Jedi sense the force in things beyond and outside of themselves. A Jedi learns to feel the bonds that connect all things. The alter skill allows a Jedi to change the distribution and nature of the force to create illusions, move objects, and change the perceptions of others. Executor Executor was Lord Darth Vader's personal flagship. The superclass Star Destroyer was the first of a new type of ship. It was approximately five times larger than the Imperial class Star Destroyer, measuring 8,000 meters from bow to stern. It was presented to the Dark Lord shortly after the Battle of Yavin, and remained in service until its destruction at the Battle of Endor. The Executor was constructed shortly after the destruction of the first Death Star, at the Starship Yards on the world of Fondor. Force Lightning The Force ability demonstrated by the Emperor aboard the second Death Star and directed against Luke Skywalker is called Force Lightning. This corruption of the Force produces white or blue bolts of energy, which fly from the user's fingertips towards a target. Force lightning flows into a target, causing great pain as it siphons off the living energy and eventually kills its victim. Jedi Knights would never employ this corrupted ability, but those who follow the dark side have no such reservations. Joris Kabaoth used Force Lightning many times after he was recruited by Grand Admiral Theron. FX-7 The sturdy FX-7 medical assistant droid aids both droid and organic surgeons with sophisticated appendages and specialized medical diagnostic and procedural programming. Considered antiquated by current standards, this droid model can mostly be found far from the galaxy's core worlds and in service to the Rebel Alliance. The Galactic Civil War The rebellion started at the instant the Empire replaced the Old Republic and tyranny gripped the galaxy. Years later, the scattered rebels were organized into the Alliance. To restore the Republic and the galaxy shuddered on the edge of civil war. The exact moment when the Galactic Civil War began cannot be pinpointed with certainty, but by the time of the Battle of Yavin, it was in full swing. Star system after star system slipped through the Empire's clenched fist to join the Alliance, and civil war rocked the galaxy from the settlements of the Outer Rim territories to the majestic spires of Imperial City. The Battle of Endor marked the end of the Civil War, as the Alliance destroyed the Second Death Star and routed the Imperial fleet. The war was slow in grinding to a halt, though, as the remnants of the Empire continued to struggle with the emerging New Republic. While the Civil War may have ended, more than five years after Endor, the conflict continues, with the Empire still trying to destroy the New Republic.
Gargon. The planet Gargon was the site of one of Han Solo's more memorable exploits. Han and his Wookiee partner, Chewbacca, received double payment to go to the planet, break into some huge, well-guarded vaults, avoid the notorious gangster who owned the facilities, steal the hoard of spice stored there, and return to their employer with the precious cargo. Greedo, a member of the Rhodian species, was one of many bounty hunters hired by Jabba the Hutt to apprehend or dispose of Han Solo, after Solo failed to complete a smuggling job for the crime lord. Greedo, with his multifaceted eyes, skull-ridged spines, and tapir-like snout, caught up with Solo at a cantina in Moss Eisley spaceport. Solo was forced to dispose of the bounty hunter in order to save his own life. Gamorian. Gamorians are a brutish, porcine species, known for their great strength and violent tendencies. Green-skinned, with pig-like snouts, small horns and tusks, Gamorians stand approximately 1.8 meters tall. Their size and temperament make them excellent heavy laborers and mercenaries. A number of Gamorians served as guards in Jabba the Hutt's desert palace. While Gamorians can understand most alien tongues, their own vocal apparatus makes it impossible to produce the sounds necessary to converse in other languages. They are native to the pleasant world of Gamor, which has a wide variety of temperatures and terrains. Gamorians love to hack and slash, and their world's history is marked by almost constant war. In Gamorian culture, females handle all of the productive work. They farm, hunt, manufacture items, and run businesses, while the males spend all their time training for and fighting wars. Gamorians live in clans that are headed by matrons. The matrons order the males to battle at the beginning of the campaign season, wielding primitive melee weapons with expert savagery. The males fight from early spring to late fall. While they have adapted to technological weapons, they do not use blaster or power arms in their planet-bound campaigns. Technological weapons are saved for off-planet use. When Gamor was discovered by traders, who lost seven trading vessels before they sent a heavily armed ship to finish negotiations, its people were turned into slaves. In addition to serving as slaves, some Gamorians have managed to sell their contracts on the open market, finding employment as guards, mercenaries, professional soldiers, and even bounty hunters. Unfortunately, Gamorians do not consider a deal binding unless it is sealed in blood. They do not believe in working for anyone who cannot best them in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Han Solo Many tags can be applied to the Corellian-born Han Solo, starship pilot, smuggler, pirate, and even rebel hero. He became involved in the Galactic Civil War when he took on a simple transport job in a cantina in Tatooine's Moss Eisley spaceport. After jettisoning Jabba the Hutt's cargo of spice to void an imperial blockade, Han needed to raise enough credits to reimburse the crime lord. For 17,000 credits, he agreed to ferry Ben Kenobi, Luke Skywalker, and two droids to Alderaan in his stocklight freighter, the Millennium Falcon, which he won from Lando Calrissian in a high-stakes Sabacc game. The adventures that followed saw Solo help rescue Princess Leia Organa from the depths of the Death Star, and then provide covering fire for Luke's shot which destroyed the huge battle station. He became one of the heroes of Yavin, and spent the next three years helping the Alliance avoid the growing number of Imperial hunters searching them out. Solo received more than enough credits from Princess Leia to pay off Jabba, but he and his longtime partner, Chewbacca the Wookiee, got drawn into the rebellion and the debt to Jabba remained unpaid. When Solo finally decided the time was right to return to Tatooine, Jabba had already put a death mark on the Corellian's head. Bounty hunters from all over the galaxy were looking for Solo, his ship, and his Wookiee companion. On Ord Mantell, a pair of hunters came close to collecting the bounty, but Solo managed to evade them. As the finishing touches were being made to the new rebel base on Hoth, 
Solo saw his departure opportunity come and go. Before he could get away, the Empire again caught up with the rebels. One notorious hunter, Boba Fett, tracked Solo to Bespin and led the Empire right to him. After encasing Solo in carbonite, Darth Vader turned his frozen form over to Boba Fett for delivery to Jabba. Solo's friends would not give the smuggler turned rebel up so easily, however, and they launched a rescue mission that saw Jabba and his criminal organization destroyed and Boba Fett lost to the great pit of Carcoon. On his return, Solo agreed to lead the Alliance strike team to Endor's moon as the prelude to the Battle of Endor. Solo has great skills as a pilot and blaster slinger. His reputation, among other smugglers, is almost as large as his own ego, and he adds his own boastful tales to those already in circulation. He's arrogant, extremely lucky, and possessed of a sharp wit and biting sense of humor. Once Chewbacca and the Millennium Falcon were the only constants in his life, but now he has an extended family, a group to belong to, and a cause worthy of his talents. Luke Skywalker is the younger brother and friend he never had. Princess Leia is the love of his life, and their affections for each other have grown over the course of their adventures. Lando Calrissian, his one-time friend and associate, has returned to round out this group of companions. A natural gambler, Solo was brave to a fault, impulsive, and willing to risk everything to win. After growing up in the Quillian star system, Han enrolled in the Imperial Academy. He graduated with honors and was on his way to a brilliant career in the Imperial Navy when his conscience got in the way. He decided to rescue a Wookiee from slavers, which earned him a dishonorable discharge and the lifelong gratitude of the Wookiee. As Wookiees were an enslaved species under Imperial law, it was not Han Solo's place to interfere with the slavers, but he could not stand by and watch the Wookiee be mistreated. That Wookiee was Chewbacca, and this choice was to influence the rest of Han Solo's life. After being discharged, Solo wandered the galaxy with little purpose. He took on a number of unsavory jobs, and all the while Chewbacca remained at his side. Even though Han tried repeatedly to get him to leave, a Wookiee's life debt is not something taken lightly, and Chewbacca stayed until Han finally acknowledged his presence. They became partners, and then fast friends. During the six years following the Battle of Endor, Han Solo married Princess Leia and became the father of three potential Jedi Knights, Jason and Jaina, twins, and Anakin. He continues to take on missions for the New Republic, though he long ago gave up any official rank or title.